Good morning, evening, afternoon. This is Paper Tuesdays. The paper with the Tuesdays. Very comfortable here, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, it's very relaxing. It's Christmas. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're very mellow. Me very mellow. I'm from Mellows. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're in great form altogether, aren't you? I am. Yeah. yeah. You hit the you hit the notes right when I, I opened the text from you this morning and it was uh, can we uh, is there a space for Frico and Marie for the <laughs> I spent five minutes laughing at it. I just thought about it, like we're not gonna see him for ages now. No Frico I was such Frico. a part of the, the team in lead up to the show. Yeah. He was integral for like probably the wrong reasons. <laughs> I know, Shout he, out he was very good and very helpful. And speaking of Freeco, here's where here's our Freeco. News are in. I would say that is or was the best production the Little Theatre has seen in ten years. A fantastic show, absolutely fantastic show all around. Couldn't speak highly enough. A thoroughly, an ultimately professional performance that Roy Key would be proud of. Everybody was on time, not to say, everything was prepared to the end degree. Congratulations, men. Well done, well done, well done. Ah, uh, an emotional flash flood. Our first positive message from Flood. <laughs> <laughs> Could become a trend, but yeah. Mark, what a what a night! Ah, oh, it was class. It really did. It went off better than expected. Definitely, yeah. And to all the hundred and eighty people who bought tickets for Gory Little Theatre, thank you. We salute you. Namaste. A huge namaste. And um, Mark, I I don't know why, but it it reminded me of what is Paper Chooses, and I'm still trying to explore that mystery. But it, it gave us another idea of what it could be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was. Uh, it was so strange I think we talked about this before but it wasn't really just like a podcast it wasn't just a live podcast it was its own show yeah really it was it was something different and we knew going into it people were going to get something different than what they expected and that's the reviews we got as well is that like I was talking to one of the lads the other day and he was saying he brought two lads with him and they were kind of home and hand about going like you know what, what interest would I have in the podcast or whatever and they went and they were absolutely like we were blown away Mm. So and that's that's down to the help we've got as well. Do you yeah. know, like if it was me and you, it probably would have just been a live podcast. You know, mm. but all, that's all thanks to Connor and Shane and Robbie and Frico and Ian Dowdall. Yeah, everyone who's involved. Yeah, and thanks for your support. And yeah, oh, and by the way, there was a hundred forty euro raised on the night for Little Blue Heroes. So shout out to them as well. Shout out to them. We I haven't told you yet. I do so many things with this podcast that I don't actually tell Mark to, <laughs> you know, things are actually needed. So Mark, we we've to get into the sea on the twenty eighth of December for Sarah <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, alright with that? Yeah, okay. with that. <laughs> it's for charity, Mark. Yeah, okay. It's for charity, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've been thinking about getting back in the sea lately and be like, oh, I should, I really should do it. And I was like, no, it's way too fucking cold. <laughs> but now, sure, I have to. So maybe that'll start our momentum again. Because remember last year we were doing it the whole time? Yeah. You, Flood and Rory. It's actually interesting because it was around that time of year, like very close to those dates when we started the cold showers. So Was it? Yeah. Oh, we were both at the same time, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the cold shower thing definitely started at the start of January. And I think we had a podcast at the end of December. So this is the 28th of December. That we're, yeah, it's so. a year then. Uh, yeah. Cold yeah. showers. Jesus. I definitely recommend them, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely a habit you need to build. But it's, yeah. once it's there, it kind of stays. And it definitely helps a lot. Like 100%. And you've been big into the saunas lately. Big into the saunas. I got try go at least six days a week. Sometimes seven, but uh, I definitely find uh, it's great for my head more so yeah. than anything else. Oh, you just how relaxed you feel afterwards. I do need to take a cold shower after the sun and wake myself back up if I go on early in the day, but uh, oh, it's just it's fantastic for your your mood. Yeah, I find more than anything else. And tell us the the technique that you've got from Andrew Hoover. So what I do is I take a 20 minutes on a 20, 25 minutes, depending on if I've trained beforehand, how long I can last. So then I'll do that. I'll then go and sit outside the sauna till my body kind of gets itself back down to its normal temperature. I don't do a cold shower then uh, because I believe that uh, is one of the beneficial parts is your body regulating its temperature back down to normal. And then once that I do that, I then get back in the sauna for as long as I can stand. It's probably five to ten minutes. I'll get back out again, let my body temperature come back down, and then I'll have a cold shower. Mm. In the Arclo Bay, they have these rainfall showers, or whatever it's called, and it's class. It's very, like, it's like, like a brick wall. Yeah. 
And tell us what, what goes through your mind like during those 25 minutes. Like, are there moments when you want to leave? Are there moments where you're like, oh, I can feel things changing in like neurochemistry? or no, Not that you can really feel a change. You can feel yourself starting to pulse and sweat a lot and you're uncomfortable. Definitely the last five to ten minutes you want to get out and you kind of just have to say, look, I'm just warm. I need I need to just sit through this. I'll get through it. Same as exercising. You want it to be over, but you know you have to go through and see it out. But uh once you're out then you start feeling very relaxed actually once you get out you, your body is pulsing as well and sweating as it's bringing itself back down and that's a very relaxing feeling because you, you are cooling back down you feel yourself doing it but um oh, sorry i forget your question no i'm just <laughs> curious about the the <laughs> mental uh little oh yeah you have to sit in it it's uh it takes discipline you have to be disciplined to do your 20 minutes do your 25 minutes because yeah. you you do you will want to get out after like 10 and a lot yeah. of people do and they're not you're not really getting the effects after time you're just kind of getting warm it's yeah. when you get up to an uncomfortable temperature that's when your body starts releasing all these heat shock proteins and uh bdnf brain derived nootropic factor which causes you know growth of new brain cells and links in neurons and stuff so that's when it's when it's actually hard is when you're improving same as that else yeah so you have to you do have to sit through that but uh, it's just it's I come I'd recommend it to everyone I think except pregnant women I think don't think they can do it right but uh yeah you just you feel great after it like and mm. apparently they don't I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast but they done a study this from Rhonda Patrick who was on Joe Rogan's podcast mm. that they done a study and they followed four hundred men in some Scandinavian country over the course of either twenty or forty years and the, for the, it was dose dependent so people who used the sauna four to five times a week had a 50% decrease in cardiovascular disease and 40% decrease in all causes of mortality. So that's heart attacks, wow. strokes, cancers, just Huge, from solid use. Yeah, no, uh, no, it was completely independent of that and else. Like. Yeah. And then, and so if you were to go two to three times a week, I think it was like 27% decrease. Mm. So if you do the five, but if you do any, you're improving it. Like you're improving your chances of surviving, living long. Yeah. So it's worth it. Like, and it, you feel good after. So I really don't see the point in not doing it. Yeah. But, you know, I'd recommend it to everyone. And now the saunas are back open. I'm sure they were closed for two years. Yeah. And so it's it's great to have them back. Saunas back open, and the appetite and demand is there. You see all these revival recovery rooms dotted around the country now. There's one in Glen Ely that is very good on the Instagram. Like there, there's a real demand for. It. Definitely, definitely, mm. and they're not that expensive to buy your own if you want one either. It's eighteen hundred euro, and if you think like it sounds like a lot, but if you think about over the course of your life, yeah, the life extension that comes with it, like eighteen hundred euro is fucking nothing. Yeah, and when thing. you think about the fibers that would accrue from those visits well, along the way, like exactly, it, it definitely worked it worked a while for you. Mm. You mentioned Rhonda Patrick there. Rhonda uh, has some great podcasts with Joe Rogan, mm. and she's also extremely good on Twitter in that like she finds a study, she summarizes maybe in three tweets and you get a good sense of where the science is at at the moment and she's done this with actually an article that I took this week Mark mm. diversity of gut microbiome mm. oh but that's a new microbiome. pronunciation <laughs> oh. yes microbiome <laughs> microbiome <laughs> may influence or be influenced by a specific emotional dynamic to do with loneliness so this study took 184 poop samples, which we're very interested in on this podcast. Yeah. And the diverse microbiome. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the moon. Bring on the moon. That's the only thing we can do. Here. But um, they're more compassionate and engaged. So um, now they say the article admits that it may be a two way street that, you know, if you have a more diverse uh, goat health, that's a better way of description of microbiome. Mm. But um then you're going to have a better mood. But it was very... I found that fascinating that they can tell from the poop that, you know, uh, you will be more engaged or that a poop sample can indicate how a person's mood is. Yeah. Fascinating, isn't That's it? That's crazy. Um, obviously there's so much in this that is and we if you're interested in that like that's uh, only the tip of the iceberg in that podcast that we did with uh, Teresa Keen of Booch and Bia. Who's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I it leads me to the question mark. Do you often think about your moods? Like, do you often say, "Oh, I'm feeling X now because of Y earlier"? Definitely. Really? Yeah, definitely. And this could be something you ate. Could it be something someone you met? Could it be something you thought about? Yeah, yeah. All the above. Yeah, all the above. It, it's a variety of factors, but like, even on the microbiome thing, there I put like a sweet over there. Mm. Pick and mix from the Galway market mm. and. 19 euro worth of pick and mix and we were eating away on them uh, and I knew an hour or two after that yeah I felt like shit yeah and I knew that was why mm. but I think um, 
making yourself aware of the factors that can cause these can help as well because you're not like feeling shit as like oh i feel shit now because i am shit or you know you don't um associate your worth with your mood excellent you don't over identify with your thoughts yes it's another way of looking at it that's a very good cap, um, encapsulation yeah and, and it can be as you're saying it could be someone you met it could be something you ate it could be not getting enough sleep the night before it could be not exercising it could be the weather it could be all of these things like there's a lot of factors that affect you in your environment mm. that you know you can look back and say oh maybe that was because of that and I, if i fix that that might fix this Mm. and it does a lot of the times like you, you will be right a lot of the time mm. X does lead to Y like you know if you're going to drink it Friday, Saturday and a cure on Sunday and you wonder why you feel shit on Tuesday maybe it's not because you know uh, fucking someone cut you off in traffic that you're upset mm. do you know very true you mentioned a very important factor there Mark the Galway Christmas market yeah you went to it <laughs> Tell me your favourite stall because I know what it's going to be. The shower heads. Yes. Yeah. Why in God's name is there a Christmas market with a stall dedicated to shower heads? Were you caught talking to this man? No, I no, wasn't. No, 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 no. I just found it fascinating. Yeah. Christmas. What, Christmas. What do we need? We need a new shower head that lights up in different colours. Yeah. There was weird stuff. There was shower heads. There was like Turkish street food. Yeah. There was a Heineken z- zero, 00 tent. I didn't go in. I don't know where they just sent a Heineken zero, 00. It's a bit weird. Uh, there was mulled wine. There was all this different kind of shit. But like a Christmas market in Galway is a bad idea. Ooh. It, it, the weather is awful. <laughs> and it's raining and it's cold. And no one wants to be out there. <laughs> but what does poor weather mean that you can't have Christmas? Yeah. In it's Galway. <laughs> Galway shouldn't have Christmas. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, see, so Ashton hated it, the mm. market. Uh, sorry, Galway. Mm. But um, I loved it because there were so many people around. Yeah. There so many people. Yeah. Why would they, there was no way in a dreary Christmas, December month that would there be as many people on a square in Galway. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, were, wasn't it thronged when you were there? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was busy. Not overly busy though, because the weather was particularly bad. Like there was that storm. Okay. But oh, yeah. uh, it honestly, it wasn't that bad in Galway. Like you could get through it. We just didn't really enjoy it being out. And there's like maybe twenty five stalls, I'd say, and a lot mm-hmm. of them selling the same shit. Yeah. Like there was stuff I was gonna get for you, a uh, seaweed bath. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, there was what else was there? There was uh, garlic grinders. Yes. A, a stall for just mm. grinding garlic. <laughs> buy fucking grinded garlic. <laughs> yeah, it's gas, isn't it? Crazy stuff. You go into Galway, Mark. I think you kind of stepped a little bit into Breed's world. Mm, yeah, the Irish. The Irish, the Connemara. Yeah, went out to Connemara one day. What we drove out, walked on the beach for ten minutes, and drove back. All right, okay. Yeah, there was roadworks in Connemara at the time. All oh, right, okay. But okay. Uh, no, I didn't actually hear anyone speak Irish. We walked oh. into a supermax to use the toilet, and it was an Indian man who told us the toilet was broke. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't know if even the Irish language has to be embedded in God. It's just a different sort of Western vibe. It's more. It is, yeah. It is, it's a tough place to live. Mm. Do you know, there's not that much sunshine. Uh, and even here, like when the weather is like this, it, it fucking it gets you down. Like, do you know, mm. it's grey, the sky is grey, you're driving on the road and the road is grey. Everything's fucking grey and dark and the days are so short. But like, that's Galway. Every day. All year round. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And the people are so white. All of them. They're, they're all so white. <laughs> Reed said it's because the British never got there. Or the whatever's never got there. I think it's because the sun never got there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, Mark. Okay. So um, there's this New Zealand retailer and they employ people. Uh, they employ 16-year-olds. And when the 16-year-old left... They um, then shared a set of rules that they, that, so, oh my gosh, start again, Michael. When the employer started hiring these 16 year olds, they were handed a, a list of rules, okay? Yes. Um, so here's some of the rules. I'll just go through them. Rule one, life is not fair. Get used to it. Rule six, if you mess up, it's not your parents', par- parents fault, so don't whine about your mistakes. Learn from them. Uh, rule seven, before you were born, your parents weren't as boring as they are now. They got that way from paying bills, cleaning your clothes, and listening to you talk about how cool you thought you were. 
So before you save the rainforest from the parasites of your parents' generation, try delousing the closet in your own room. Oh my gosh. Uh, and rule nine, life is not divided into semesters. You don't get summers off and very few employers are interested in helping you find yourself. Do that in your own time. <laughs> <laughs> Rule 10 Television is not real life In real life people actually have to leave the coffee shop And go to jobs <laughs> Rule 11 Be nice to nerds Chances are you'll end up working for one. Oh my gosh um, Wow uh, Rule 5 Flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity Your grandparents had a different word for burger flipping They called it opportunity Okay so there's a snapshot of what was going on there uh, So the, the, fa- the One of the parents of the 16 year old Who left the job uh, posted this condescending list of rules and thought it was out of line. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, it is kind of out of line, isn't it? Like the the facts are real, uh, but it's kind of worded in a very condescending way. Yeah, disrespectful. But uh, it's very Jordan Pearson esque, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, Jordan, Jordo, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of Jordan and I loved his books, but he did something during the week and <sighs> what was it? Yeah, but I had a silly old tweet and I thought, now Jordan. Come on now, Jordan. One second, I'll find it. I seen him dancing on Instagram. Oh, I'm all for dancing. All for <laughs> dancing. Dance away, Jordan. Answer colon. A new variant is announced when pharmaceutical company share prices dip. I call bullshit on that. What do you think? There was no statistics to back it up. There was no uh, at the time of the latest variant, uh, Pfizer was going down a little bit, but should they go so high? But can we really say? You can't. But it's beyond our scope. But, like, it's getting annoying at this stage, isn't it? The, the, the old virus? Yeah. The thing that's going around. The thing that's going we around. We only mentioned it once in the live show. I love that. I think it was only once. Anyway. We never talked about it. It's because people want to fucking break from it. Yeah. It's everywhere. It's, ah. Oh. Mm. Like, um, we're getting boosters now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Here uh, we go. <laughs> Like, when is it going to fucking end? Like, when are they going to say right now that's well, we it? we have the loyalty cards filled up. <laughs> yeah, we have the loyalty cards filled up. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know. What, why? Do you want to attend soon, Mark? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd like there to be no COVID anymore, please. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. To be continued, I'd say. <laughs> but anyway, Mark, on to more important matters. You, yeah. you have... a bone you want to pick with Claire's buy and sell yes Claire if you're listening uh, I posted ham for sale on Claire's buy and sell last night for a reasonable price of yeah. 3 euro a nice plate, plate of ham oh, cut. And, uh, she deleted my post Claire and I tried to sell half a bottle of mouthwash at it before and it wasn't deleted <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was I would <laughs> I was in the kitchen making a sandwich and I saw a plate of ham and I thought maybe somebody else would like this ham and I said I'd sell it on for 3 euro and I posted it and someone commented offering 50 cent which mm. was completely out of order so no way I was going to sell that for 50 cent and I commented back with a screenshot or a picture of myself edited from the Selling Sunset picture and it said a picture of me saying selling ham on it and clearly in my post how are you supposed to do business under mm. these conditions yeah and who was Elaine? <laughs> when did Elaine come into this? Um, and you see people selling such fucking bollocks on it. Ham <laughs> is like the what least fucking out there thing for sale on Claire's Buy and Sell. A lot of things are for sale, but people looking for friends on Claire's Buy and Sell. There's a lady on it, I can't remember her name, but she posts on it the whole time looking for ridiculous shit so she can have someone to talk to. <laughs> Does anyone know how I turn on the immersion? Thanks. Hi, me again. Are there any clubs in town that sell hand wash? <laughs> how do I learn the tango? Where is YouTube? <laughs> I put diesel in my car. Any advice? <laughs> Shut up. I love the genuine reason. Like, you know, when they discount and they're selling something. And they have said the genuine reason. I'd love to know the genuine, genuine reason. <laughs> I'd like to get a list of them. What was Fab's genuine reason for selling this toilet? Oh, I, see, I, don't get... <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And in fact, he was hiding behind the toilet. <laughs> you can just see his hand going over the toilet. <laughs> I love that the algorithms work as well. Like Claire's by itself and, and the lane. Sorry, lane. Mm. That it's become a mine of information. Like there are mm. posts every minute going up on it. 
Like all the time. So many times when I now because we've had engagement with Claire and then by himself, I've now uh it's just my, my feed is full flooded yeah. with it. Oh yeah. that's all my Facebook feed mm. is as well, is Claire's buy and sell. Mm. Like and I've no interest in any of it. No, at, but at you all. just want to make a quick profit though. I just yeah, yeah. Quick, <laughs> in and out. Gary B Carbo's in. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Gary B heard of Claire's words we should let him know <laughs> you're big into Gary B oh I've gone harder into it harder yeah what is it what is, what's the appeal the appeal his honesty his honesty yes right and so like and he has this NFT game and he has this kind of new whole market share he's onto something in that he's now basically the, the point of having his camera crews around him and all is to show how honest and accountable he is right. so the cameras will always be rolling and he you, you never know who he's going to eat and what sort of off the cuff sort of response he's going to give that will then be posted on his own Instagram but it's that level of accountability and trust that will if based on what I've heard from Naval Ravikant and all these guys it seems like that we're going to seek more accountable leaders when it comes to politics finance and everything in the future and mm. to me Gary V is that man. Vote Gary V, number one in this series. <laughs> I heard someone going on a rant about Gary V once and they like took clips of his videos and he's like, you need to start your own business. And he's like, yes, Gary, I will. What business will I start? And he's like, Gary V saying another thing. And then you do this and that and like it's just vague stuff and your man oh, by yeah. the end of it is like smoking. He's like, I don't fucking know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's fair enough. And that's true as well. But like he's just so... It's a simple message that he's getting across as well. Like, he's not peddling a Ponzi scheme. Well, I'm sure some people would say that NFTs are Ponzi schemes. But, mm. and, but it, there's a lot of gratitude about it, and I'm all into that. And he has a new book out, 12 Principles and a Half or something, and it's all about how kindness should, and compassion should be grounding blocks of business rather than the more cutthroat things that we associate with business. I'm looking forward to listening to the audio book because he goes off script. Oh. And it's, it's when he goes off script that you get the beautiful stuff. Yeah. Um, yes. Gary Vee though um, Oh yeah sorry His face always looks so angry <laughs> Oh yeah He's like a pug That another dog just pissed on <laughs> But he's like oh, Kindness And gratitude <laughs> Those are the two things That's all you need Simple Simple <laughs> Kindness I appreciate you all so much I appreciate much. <laughs> you all so much I just want to buy the jets <laughs> Oh, Gary, I hope you see this. Um, <laughs> when I was watching one of his videos and, he, and someone asked him, what age do you think you are mentally? And he takes a moment and he goes, I'm, I, I veer between 88 and 12. Because I'm, when I'm 12, I'm playful of everything. But then 88, I'm like, you know, he's all into just, just be kind, be kind, you know. So he, he has these two personalities that he just flips between. It was very interesting. Mm. Gary V. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah, a big namaste to Fab O'Brien and Roshi Kinsa, <laughs> who, who provided us with some beautiful goodies. And you'll see her there Saturday week. No, you won't, because Saturday week is Christmas Day. So, <laughs> Mark, will we take a parish of the week, I yeah, suppose? Yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Ross there, Harbour Accommodation Centre. Woo! <laughs> A uh, six-week social soccer program has come to an end there. They had a massive tournament. Well, it was probably not that big, but anyway. <laughs> eight teams, and they were building relationships and rapport with these people in the Direct, direct Provision Centre, um, some Syrian nationals. And what I love about this, Mark, is that we see the positive steps of integration with people coming in here from other countries. And four of the residents have now joined the local soccer club, Ross Lair Rangers. So that is a fantastic news story for me. That's great. Our Parish of the Week, Ross Lair. Take it away, boys and girls. Who would have thought it, huh? Yeah. Ross Lair getting a Parish of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they're coming up there. I range. have some local news oh, uh, headlines for you, Michael, if you want them. Yes. Uh, I don't know, maybe you might want to skip the first one, but um, I'll let you decide that. Okay. Uh. Oh, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> right, we might skip it then. <laughs> It's very good. We'll put it on our Patreon. Yeah. So if you'd like to know what this local news story is, you can find us on Patreon. We're Paper Tuesdays and we're creating wholesome content there. And we'll be going hard into the Patreon just like uh, Gary V there. So. Our New Year's resolution. Yeah, absolutely. Namaste. Namaste. Anyway, in other news, NWSPCA is happy to drop charges after discovering that the Hungry Bear on McDermott Street was actually a cafe. It's a good news story. <laughs> good news story. Awesome. <laughs> 
This is another breaking news here. Jer Kush has been called back into the Intercounty panel after his paper chooses live show. <laughs> That's a very good one, man. <laughs> you were up close and personal when Jer was taking those shots in the very 1996 much. glory holes. And, uh... Yeah. So uh, I thought Jer was going to hit me at one stage because here's what happened. Okay. Uh, you wrote the uh, questions yeah. for this and they were written in your kind of language. So I had to try to read out like um, really fast paced to Jer Kush who was trying to focus on hitting the balls in the wall. Like, who did you elude in the 1996 Leinster Senior Hurling County final after you bypassed the cornerback on the way through the field? And I was just like, Jer, uh, who in the 96 final did you uh, block down? He was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's such a big man. He's yeah. so such a big imposing man. Like he's lovely. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely annoyed him. <laughs> <laughs> it's deceiving how um, because he's quite tall. Like he's yeah. six foot, you know, but you wouldn't think of his height. Do you know Jer? Jer, who's Jer? My father learned from him last night in Navy in a complex bar that Jer has lost three to stone in the last few has months. He? So, Fuck, yeah. fair play, yeah. Tom. Absolutely, absolutely. He will be back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> accuracy here. I in the actually was news. looking through uh, photo of him here the other night, and there's photos of Jericho and Billy Byrne in it with us with the trophies, the Leinster one. Yeah, yeah, that's mad. It was, yeah, I was looking through family photos. That's oh, so. Jericho. <laughs> Unreal, yeah. isn't it? He's very like Jack when he was younger. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A bit of him. Yeah, oh, iconic. Um, J- Liam Jericho. Oh yeah. I love some of the questions I have to say in putting them together. I loved how Billy Byrne um, offered to, um, he'd carry the oranges for the team for Liam Griffin because he felt so embedded in the culture that uh, it didn't matter that he was kind of going to only be used as a sub. Mm. He felt like a, a real strong part of the team. Mm. And then you have the likes of Jared Cush and I love Liam Dunn saying to him that um, we're going to answer the critics on the first Sunday in September. Yeah. You know, these two that were probably heavily criticised for, for different aspects. I don't know why Liam Dunn was criticised but I know Jer had to struggle to um, you know all that's running training and that type of thing so yeah. it's uh, it's some answer yeah Jer didn't actually know the answer to that question when I asked him <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then there was one you just said yeah go ahead <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, oh, you know straight away one how many hills are in Gory oh yeah how many hills are in Gory it's like seven yeah <laughs> I mean, he's not going to fucking know this. <laughs> oh, yeah. He did, yeah. He'd be aware of that, would he? Like, yeah, it's kind of a big thing for Gory Town because uh, uh, it's on our club crest. Oh, and, I see. Um, and the goat. Why is the goat? Oh, because Gory was a goat town. Yeah. As we learned on the live podcast as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And speaking of, I suppose since we're on this topic, uh, yes, there's a Navy and a GA history book. I know that's where you were leading us, Mark. Yeah. And you can get it for 15 euro and you can message me. And uh, thanks to everyone for contributing. It is live. A signed copy. Signed copy. Yeah, yeah. I'd be signing Gary V copies. <laughs> In other news, Tom oh, Brack Natives. Mm. Sorry. Are you going to do an audiobook? <laughs> oh, go there's script. one. Yeah, go on script. Sure yeah. a cunt from Wicklow came in and tried to take us. <laughs> there's one lad in it who goes off um, and, uh, oh yeah, he goes, someone was protesting their innocence when the referee blew the whistle and uh, the referee goes back, you can't hit a man in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> And that, for some reason, that's in the name of the history. <laughs> that's for the, that's, that's what we want to preserve here. Uh, in other news, Tom Brack natives are, have been added to Ireland's endangered animals list. Well, this is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brack, Mark, ever been there? No, I haven't. No, uh, it Mark, looks like, uh, the, sorry. The pub in there apparently is hopping. Coleman's looks yeah. the place to be. Yeah. Sam Alley's story. Apparently so. Mm. DJ Keno brings a crowd. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does indeed. Um, in other news, there's a government recall of Carlo due to the lack of public interest. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of counties, uh, did you see on, on Twitter there, you can actually go to Paper Chooses Twitter and you, you, we've retweeted a tweet that we found thanks to James Mordant and it's someone that took the maps of each county and drew things. So like he has, I think there's an elephant is one county and uh, Wexford is a witch the way the the mm. land comes in at the bottom and mm. it's a big nose so mm. yeah That's yeah. Cool. so worth a uh, look at there yeah. Yeah. oh yeah Mark when did you totally overreact beyond any proportion like <sighs> any examples I know I had one or two um, a lot a lot a lot um, when did I overreact 
I can't think. I've got one actually, Go yeah. On. I remember a few Christmases ago now, this must be five or six years ago, Ashen uh, tore up bags. Like, just tore up bags. And I have a thing that, like, you know, bags, anything that you have can be used again. I yeah. ju- I'm, And maybe it's being mean or whatever, wouldn't spend Christmas, but anyway. Um, and she tore up the bags. I, I sold for five or ten minutes. <laughs> so annoyed. I saw that. And just bags, just piece of paper. And my mother had to tell me that human beings are more important than bags. And it's an important life lesson. <laughs> there we go. That That's take a, it from it. a real turning point for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can you identify with any of that? I'm trying to think now. No, I, I no. honestly can't think of a specific You never got to attach with bags. No, 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 no never. No. never. Good, good. Well, a Florida man was angry over his neighbour's parking habits, as he would be. Yeah. Mm. So he sprayed fire from a flamethrower toward the car with three teens inside it. <laughs> no one was hurt, thankfully. Um, this flamethrower that he had, it shoots 20 feet of a distance, some significant distance, and you can get them online for $900. <laughs> Um, the suspect told the Mercury News that his neighbour's issues need to be brought to light. I ah. thought that was a bit of a pun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he attended it. He has charges coming forward against him now for uh, trying to assault people with a flamethrower. So, there you go. I watched the documentary last night. Uh, what's it called? Running or running f- into the fire or something. But uh, I'll find out the name of it. It was about these twins in England about 10 or 15 years ago. They were uh, Scandinavian and the show starts with these two ladies walking down the the middle of a dual carriageway. There's like gravel in between the two sides, so the one going north and south. They're walking along it and it's CCTV footage and uh, they were shooting this show, uh, Highway Motor Cops in England or something. So they had a cameraman with them for this. So this actually wasn't used in the show or might have been, but they made a documentary about it afterwards. So these two ladies are walking down this, the middle of this dual carriageway. The cops see the CCTV, go onto the dual carriageway, pull up behind them with the sirens on. When they hear the cops coming, they jump out into traffic to try to get hit by cars. Oh my gosh. The cars miss them. Oh no, they, sorry, they might have got hit by one then. And then when the cops arrive, they bring them over to the side of the road. Unbelievably, both women are fine. And more cops arrive then. The cops with the cameras. They're talking to these ladies on the side of the road. They're all normal. And they're filming. The cops kind of talk about what's going on. Two cops are with the two ladies. All of a sudden, in in the background, so the camera's filming the the, the cops talk and the women are standing with the other cops in the background. The late, One lady runs out again oh under an articulated God. lorry. And then her sister follows her and runs out in front of a Micra, a small car. And you can see the first one going under the wheels of the Arctic and the second one getting hit and smashing the windscreen of this micro, going up over the car, and both of them are lying on the floor. They run out. When they start assisting these two ladies, they start giving abuse to the cops, spitting at them. This, the first lady who went under the Arctic is alive, and she's fighting with the cops. Her bottom half, her legs are completely tore open, broken, bones coming out of them. Her, her bottom half is broken. Her top half is spitting and shouting at the police, fighting them off, throwing punches. The second one comes back from being knocked out, wakes up, runs across the dual carriageway on the other side to get away from the police. The police run onto the dual carriageway are like talking to her. She's fighting them off. It takes six police officers to restrain this one who got up and ran again. They bring her over, tie her down, sedate her, take her off in an ambulance to the hospital. The second one gets up. The second one doesn't get up there, lift her to hospital as well. One of the sisters goes to prison or goes to jail for assaulting the police officers. She gets out after a week or something while the case is uh, ongoing. That day she gets out of hospital. She goes and murders someone. A oh random murder. Yeah, she goes into some random lad's house, stabs him and runs away. I probably shouldn't have told this story because that's as much of a documentary as I've watched. I've watched the first half an hour of it. And for half an hour? Yeah. All back oh, it's action packed. It's action packed. It's, it's so fucking bizarre. These twins, and there was no uh, drug use, no drugs found on them in their person. And they ran out in the traffic twice so under an Arctic. You haven't got to, like, you haven't figured out any motives. No, that's what they, that's the bizarre thing. They have no motives, no understanding of it, why it happened. It's crazy. Twins. Jenny, Mac. Mm. So what's the name of that? Uh, I'm going to try to find it now. Please, yeah. Um, While you do, just a footnote that I notice now that you're wearing green and red for Mayo on your cap and it's a Mayo jersey here. So it's a nice little parallel. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thanks, Michael. Running in the traffic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Terry. Another thing I've been watching a lot of okay. is Trading Spouses. Madness in the Fast Lane is okay. the name of that documentary. Madness in the Fast Lane, remember it. Mm. Right, so it's <laughs> Trading Spouses is what I've been watching. Right. Fantastic. Swap, swap li- wives? S- swap wives. Okay. It's from America. I used to be on telly the whole time. I right. used to be on TG3, TV3 or TG Car or something, but I used to show it. And it's on YouTube. It's from like the 90s. And it's so good. It's such shite, but it's so good. Like the episode is like two hours long. And the, there's this lady in the first episode I watched, and she's this big, massive, fat slob basically like there's no nice way of putting it she is uh, she's like 300 pounds she just sits in the chair and barks orders at her family all day and everyone has to answer to her so they swap her with this other family who are very I think you'd fit in well actually they're um, very spiritual and mandalas and uh, meditations and they have a party when the big fat one is there and they do this uh, solstice Oh, right. So they burn all this incense and have this party and she hates it. They have gargoyles, like statues around the house. She hates that. So she comes... Anyway, there's all kinds of fucking friction and mayhem there and they all argue. She comes back. They give her... You get 50,000 for this. What? They give each family 50,000 oh and gosh. the wife gets to decide how the family spend the money. Wow. And it's... Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so this lady uh, comes back. She's so upset with this spiritual family, reckons they're heathens, they're, they're Satan. She comes back, takes the letter, rips it up, the 50,000, screaming, I'm a God warrior. She's a real Christian family. Screaming. Oh, right. Because when she's in this... well pitched then. Yeah, oh, yeah, they know what they're doing, like, yeah. with these families together. But uh, she, when she's with the other spiritual family, he runs a radio show on love and relationships, and they bring in a psychic, and she, she this one is presenting the show him for the day. And the psychic comes in, and she's like, "I do, I abhor this. I, uh, I something. I rebuke this in the name of the Lord." Goes like that and throws her hand at him, and she walks out. She won't look at him, won't speak to him. She reckons that man is Satan. Okay. And it's just I recommend people watch Trading Spouses on YouTube. Oh, it sounds like I'm going to be. You'd love on it. That. Yeah, love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That sounds like a bit of me. All right. Mm. Uh, Mark, what's the most petty dispute you've partaken in? Most petty dispute. Mm. Oh, probably me and Shane wearing each other's clothes I'd say okay it happens. tell us more still happens often like I don't know when it started but we just kind of end up taking each other's clothes we don't do as much anymore we used to take each other's clothes all the time or like if the washing is out what do you take Shane's jersey or you take mine or trousers or shorts or something and that's just kind of it's real petty stuff like because it's just clothes yeah mm-hmm. for years when we were in secondary school I begged mam to put a, get a lock on my door so I wouldn't come in and take my clothes <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually a, still on going on there's a down a down GA jersey that I got in TY and he every time he takes it without fail so I've been for the last year I've hit it and I, I only, I, it only comes out of this hiding space when I'm wearing it to the train and everyone like it's mine and Does he, he but I only found out that he, was his jersey now yeah, no, he, yeah no this is another card he always thought it was his jersey and he's like I got that in TY I thought Brendan left it Toss. <laughs> so I have mine. Oh my god. There you go. Yeah. 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 On this topic though, Shane, you, you you like it's not just the clothes, like I remember like Mark and I would just go around the corridors of GCS making chainsaw noises too. Yeah. It must have been quite traumatic. Yeah, yeah. um we were, I just had this in the bubble last night with like Cottle Greg and I think a fucking sharpshooter. <laughs> but uh <laughs> pew, pew. like yeah, I think the whole thing kicked off. Like kind of so, so so catchy chainsaw the, the chainsaw thing, but like I spurred it on by hating it at the start. I think like I hated it, and that's really what made us think. And then like I kind of took a step back and was like, oh, why do I hate it? And I, I just, <laughs> and I just realized I, <laughs> I might as well just fucking go with it. Same thing with Carl Greg, and like everyone called him sharpshooter, like because of training and he was bad at shooting. <laughs> and like I like, just take the piss out, man. He went mad the first while, and it just stuck. And then everyone started start making pew 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 noises at him, like and for years in school. <laughs> He still doesn't like it. <laughs> but that's true. Once you kind of st- it stops affecting it, people stop calling you. Like, yeah, I think. Well, Dara Cullen still calls you Shane. Yeah, no, a lot of people still call me Shane. Like anyone that go to school with really would call Shane. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember the first day that happened. We were watching the Simpsons movie. And Homer says, stand back, I've got a chainsaw. Rah, 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 rah. He doesn't actually, he's behind a locked door. Oh, right. And I remember seeing Shane, I was like, Shane, saw. <laughs> chainsaw. <laughs> petty drop. <laughs> yeah. That's gas. Well, here's another petty dispute that I wouldn't like to be caught up in. There's a Reddit man, um, and he's paced, he offered the story there, the question to Reddit. Uh, he always prepared his wife's lunch. 
and he noticed that she wasn't eating it. So he, you know, first of all, he thought he'd mix up the lunches, bit of variety. Mm. Right, he's the spice of life, as John O'Connor's mother used to say to me in the shop beside Gordon Community School. Yeah. And um, then the wife said she actually eats at the work canteen. All oh, right, that's grand. Sure, he stopped making her lunch and he just made the child's lunch. <laughs> But then when the wife uh, noticed that he'd stopped making the lunch, she branded him childish and uh, she wanted him to continue making the lunch that she wasn't going to eat. Oh. So what do you make of this, Barb? Uh, well, look, <laughs> women are always right, aren't they? <laughs> um, <coughs> she's childish. Yeah. Yeah, it's the obvious answer. But it's projection, I think, a little bit. From him or her? From her. From her. Oh, yes, calling him childish. Because yeah. she's upset that he's not Could making be. fake lunch for her. Yeah, but I haven't done my psychology course yet, but I'm going to f- yeah. <laughs> put a fibre on that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But the power of Reddit as well, the fact that he felt compelled that his avenue of uh, personal reconciliation would be through a Reddit post. Yeah, there's a lot of that goes on on Reddit. Mm. I am... Um, uh, look on Reddit there's a group called June 2022 Bumpers which is people having babies in June 2022 oh. and I don't go on it anymore but at the start I did because I was trying to fucking find out stuff you know I didn't mm. know what, what to do or what to expect and, but now you go on it and it's just people moaning about their own problems it's like okay. such fucking stupid shit there was one lady recently last time I done it was complaining that she finds it uh Invasive that her mother in law always asks, asks how she is anytime she sees her. She thinks mm. that's an invasion of privacy and she should right. just mind her own business. Like, yeah. imagine going online to write that kind of shit. Like, so fucking stupid. This leads nicely onto something that we haven't discussed personally, but like, how are you feeling about fatherhood? Uh, excited. It, it doesn't really feel real yet because mm. um, there's no baby. Mm. So it's kind of. Uh, I don't think about it all the time. It kind of comes in waves. I kind of remember that I'm going to be a dad and then I get kind of happy and excited. But uh, there's no real fear or anxiety about it, which is strange because I know a lot of people do worry about it and stuff. And Well, maybe like once or twice I may be worried uh, how am I going to balance all these things when I'm a dad or am I going to be good at it? But like, I'm, I'm fairly confident that I'm going to be a good father because just the way I am I think I'm naturally that way inclined I'm good with kids I enjoy their company not in <laughs> don't look at me like that uh, no but uh, I do like I'm very much uh, looking forward to it mm. yeah. um, you obviously want to be a father someday as yeah. well I can tell by you as well you love the kids and you love talking about it you love uh yeah, it's almost like though that it's almost a form of worship or something that like you that there's something more important in the world than you. And I think actually mm. Naval Ravikant says if you're going to do anything in life, you become a, have children or become a saint because there's no other way out for you. Because otherwise, you just glory yourself or you become invested in yourself too much. Yeah, definitely. And I noticed uh, there is kind of changes in myself when I look back. When we found out Breed was pregnant in London, it was like uh, there was like a switch as soon as I found out that was like far more kind of aware of uh not that need breathing needs to be looked after but that i need to be like you know more mm. protective in a way mm. i don't know like it, it's kind of this is uh, more my responsibility now i can't just mm. you know like leave or not pay attention or do whatever the fuck i want like i am accountable to something big now so i have to kind of be aware of it it's probably a challenge that like that that element of relationship like is something that needs to be preserved but i don't know like i, I know in the past it probably resulted in like um a negative dynamic between man and woman where you know the man was at the top and that was it but mm. like it, it's not like they're two independent a man and a woman is totally independent like it, it's how they come together and how one and the other protect each other that is an aspect that that deserves preservation deserves protection as like and I suppose it only comes naturally in relationships like that's how you and Breed are coming to it now I certainly benefit from you and my relationship in that lens as well yeah it makes it more meaningful doesn't it like yes. my life yeah there is not about life isn't about finding uh, one meaning I think mm. it's not like there's no what is the meaning of life there is no the meaning mm. there, you find meaning in it but I think like this mm. is the, the most um clear way of having meaning in your life I think to be accountable and to be to have to provide and look after other people I think there's no escape clause then you know I don't get to just leave 
or die. Do you know, I have I there's a, and other people are dependent on me now, which is good. I I enjoy it. Mm. Well, part of it is just showing up. You know, yeah. we hear that so often as well that you know part of it is just showing up and doing the work and that that's that's I think that speaks to what you're saying as well. Like I know, but you haven't felt that fear, and I think it's because you know that you can be, you can display those signs of accountability. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I've always knew I wanted to be a dad. I actually thought I'd be a dad younger than I am now. Really? Yeah, it's just that since I was like 17, 18, I kind of knew that the purpose of relationships, to me anyway, was to build a family and have a family and have kids. And that's just, I've kind of always understood that, you know, there's never been like, if I've ever, uh, you know, being single never really suited me. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't get it really. Like I didn't, do you know some people enjoy that mm. I didn't really I was like well this is kind of like I'm wasting my fucking time here do you mm. know doing this so once I kind of decided right look I'm going to fucking do this now and it's the time is right uh, I haven't really looked back since there's been no doubts in my mind mm. so and I'm happy now so mm. I'm just sort of looking forward to the future it's beautiful I'm sure we'll touch on it again many times um, yeah it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing um, wow um, right, Mark, do you want to offer any comment on the, the it took balls and guts to to put out the mental health podcast there a few weeks ago? Mm. Um, you've you've been blown away by the positive support that arose from it. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I've been I have been definitely blown away. I honestly mm. didn't think I'd get much of a reaction at all. Maybe like I knew a few people would message and be like, "Oh, fair play to you" or whatever. Well, it's just it's been I've been blown away by the support from people and people sharing their own stories and stuff like that people that you wouldn't think would struggle but uh, I definitely think uh, this time of year it's important to have kind of a positive message of it because all you kind of hear in mental health is the the negative stories and the ones that didn't go well and you know people that are you know suicide unfortunately is still a fucking massive problem and mm. I hate hearing about it I, honestly it's the one thing I never want to hear about for many reasons but like I just kind of sick of hearing about it like I, so if I can do something to help stop one person committing suicide or falling down a dark hole then that's worth it to me like you know what mm. I went through if not else I got a story out of it and if that helped someone else then it was worth it to mm. me you know but uh, yeah. people have been saying you know oh, that, that was very uh, brave or it must have been very hard it wasn't really hard I think once I just sat down and said to myself I'm just going to be completely honest here and tell this story from start to finish it was easy I was able to just sit in that honesty and look anytime I felt hesitant or anything like that just like you're here now just keep going and I just kept telling the truth the whole way through and if nothing else it was a therapy session for me do you know I felt much better after doing it uh, I hadn't planned to do this really that's why it was the last weekend in November it was just one day I kind of came home and I was like look fuck it I'm just going to do this now because I knew I was going to do it at some stage ever since we started the podcast I was like I'm going to end up telling this story on this at some stage and I thought I may as well just do it now when it's this time of year it's a men's mental health month and I think that was the right time and I just did it I said I'm just gonna tell the truth and it worked and I think that telling the truth is just kind of the way out of it of, of all these things do you know if someone can see that I can do that speaking to a microphone and tell it to however many people want to listen then they can sit down and talk to their family member or they can talk to their friend or they can go and use one of the services and just speak from honesty and you think you can't do it or it's so confusing but if you actually it's it's just in the doing it's like writing you think when you're going to write something you're like i don't know what the fuck i'm going to write it comes to you as you do it so just sit down with someone with the intention to speak honestly and it'll come and that's all really you have to do and it's not hard it seems hard the thought of doing it's hard but once you actually start you'll find your way through it yeah, really well said, Mac. You couldn't put it any better. Um, that's that's perfect. Um, there, there's just one aspect that I wanted to. I don't know if it's maybe it's past now, but it's um. Well, fair play to, fair play to you for doing it. And uh, like you say, what like you just give a bit of light. And uh, no, sorry, that's it. Your honesty, and you you've touched on it there several times. Uh, what I found most interesting is that from what I could tell listening to it how honest the whole thing was the account of it was everything was crystal authenticity there was no and you had a level of perspective that you only gain with time mm, um, yeah. and but you you knew you were very perceptive and you're able to tell when people are telling the truth by the tone of their voice yeah 
Are, are you not? I think I thought most people are. It's. I think it's a skill. Like, yeah. to, like because we hear so we hear radio shows. We hear everything talking all the time. Like and mm. we don't ever. Well, I would never click with me. There. That's a bit contrived. Or no, no. Sometimes you would. It would be fairly evident. But yeah. I think you have a very good level of telling the intonation of someone's tone. Yeah, I think so. Well, I I think you are as well. I think people. Uh, it's a it's an empathy thing. You need to have empathy to be able to tell. You need to be able to put yourself in their shoes or like read body language I think women are very good at it like, definitely women know when you're lying yeah. you know you can I can say something to breed or any woman and like they, they know because mm. they might not tell you at the time but they were like you, you said this that wasn't true or whatever they, they are able to read your body language like you said before Ashton's able to know what you're thinking before you say it mm. she's able to read you women are much better at reading people so I think that's another way to get good at telling the truth is speak to more women because mm. they'll correct you. They'll know if you're lying or not. Or they'll know if something's not congruent with how you're acting and your tone of voice, your body language while you're speaking. They're able to pick up on that much better than men, I think. And that's what a lot of people just said. You're very honest. Like, I could have been lying about some of that stuff. But they're able to tell, I think, in my tone of voice and the way I spoke that I was it was all true. Like, yeah. Do you know, you can tell when people are telling the truth. But the universe... Well, maybe it's just what you surround yourself with. But I did not hear one person say doubt the and that's such a difficult thing to do because you know it's very easy to say oh to say oh someone was attention attention seeking but like i knew i i was just blown away that by the, the by the honesty factor to be honest because mm. yes you were being honest and sharing your struggle but it was very easy to just share a struggle you 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 put all the cards on the table and you didn't you didn't hold back and that's Look, I'm sure everyone has understands that. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's not hard uh, to do. You just no. have to let yourself do it. Yes. Um, and the truth is way easier than lying. Yeah. Because you don't have to remember what to say. Is not what they say. That's it. So yeah. you just it's it's so much less friction when you speak. I think because if yeah. someone is lying, they're trying to think about what they're saying. I wasn't thinking about what I was saying. No. I was just saying what I felt. There was no delay. I think. Yes. No delay. I like that. Can we end on a positive, more lighter note yes, yeah. than this? Uh, I have, so I was looking, I found some funny news stories today while I was looking up. These are actually not stories, they're headlines. Okay. Some of the funniest headlines. So the first one was forecasters call for weather on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> the folks at the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Gazette make no promises about Tuesday. Enjoy the weather on Monday while you have it because the rest of the week could contain no atmosphere whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and the next one is amphibious pitcher makes debut in a baseball match. Uh, apparently he's amphibious. Uh, cows lose their jobs as milk prices drop. <laughs> Miracle cure kills fifth patient. Okay. <laughs> Man accused of killing lawyer receives a new attorney. <laughs> These are all real news articles. They have like the pictures of Oh my god. They were printed like. State population to double by 2040. Babies to blame. <laughs> Mississippi's literacy program shows improvement. They spelled oh. Mississippi wrong. <laughs> uh, breathing oxygen linked to staying alive. <laughs> Police arrest everyone on February 22nd. <laughs> Thursday is cancelled. Oh dear. Bridge closure date, Thursday or October. <laughs> most earthquake most earthquake damage is caused by shaking. <laughs> Federal agents raid gun shop, find weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Safety meeting ends in accident. <laughs> that actually reminds me of uh, the what's it called? First aid course we did in school in TY where I had to leave to go to the hospital. Yes, because we told this story. I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe not. We'll just go through it quickly again. So yeah. we were doing a first aid course in TY. I was sitting beside Grog Cullen down the back, messing with, and I had a bead bracelet. Me and Grog were fighting, or mess fighting, and he broke the bracelet, and then he picked up one of the beads off the floor and shoved it in my ear, <laughs> and it got stuck. And I went up and asked your one, uh, can you get this out? And she was like, no, how am I going to get that out? I was like, you're the first aid lady. She's like, you may go down to the reception. So the reception, I had to go to the doctors, get it taken out. And you got a little, little canister, didn't you? I did, I got a little canister and I brought it back and showed everyone. <laughs> muddy Creek problem. It's too muddy. <laughs> Murderer says detective ruined his reputation. 
Utah Poison Control Center reminds everyone not to take poison. Mm-hmm. Bugs flying around with wings are flying bugs. <laughs> Students cook and serve grandparents. <laughs> Alton attorney accidentally sues himself. Hospitals resort to hiring doctors. <laughs> Farmer using cannon to protect watermelons. <laughs> Voters to vote on whether to vote. <laughs> Museums full of history. A goat accused of robbery? Police in Nigeria are holding a goat on suspicion of attempted armed robbery. <laughs> Vigilantes seized a black and white goat, saying it was an armed robber who had used black magic to transform himself into an animal to escape after trying to steal a Mazda 323. <laughs> a spokesperson for police in the eastern state of Kwara said the goat is in our custody. Vigilantes saw some hoodlums attempting to rob a car. One escaped while the other turned into a goat. <laughs> It's always the magic in Nigeria, isn't it? Uh, that's it, yeah. It's brilliant. Oh, we were watching Ninth Day Fiance as well. I'm glad. It's, where is that? It's nowhere. It's fucking. I was it's watching. It's hard to get it. Yeah. Can't stream it. I wanted to stream yeah. it last night, but we were just it's watching so clips good. on YouTube. Baby I love, love it so much. The Nigerian? Uh, no, oh, Nigerian? The uh, rap star or the pop star. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. It's so good. I love the Russian factor as well. The Russians are always oh, big characters. Yeah. Your man that went over and he met her three times, or he yeah. raised me her three times, yeah. and he's still going to meet her. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, your man, the lad in Marrakesh, who had the, the yeah, lady over. She wasn't really interested, was Yeah, he? don't hug me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a flash flood from James to oh, cause us on. Yeah. Here we go. People in England need a good, long, hard look at themselves. Clowns is all you describe, man. Clowns are all you describe, man. That fucking pipe cleaner of a prime minister, the long haired, fluffy fucking age of Boris Johnson, a liar, a shyster, and a cowboy. And then you have the other clown, his right hand man, the posh fucker, Jacob Reeves Mobs, bastard. Going around with smarmy comments and his nose in the air. I tell you something, I'd love to hit that lad a slap or two and remind him. Just, uh, that's some basic fucking manners. <laughs> so good at it that was so good he's just able to capture something a bit of emotion cowards mm. I just find the more James dives into this the less we're able to actually comment on what's going on he covers it all doesn't he, he? Co- yeah he we can. can't go back and say no James you're wrong no it's gone past that point yeah now. there's no there's no, no arguing with him there we just let it be let it be let it be let it all hang out and have a great week guys thanks very much we've been Paper Tuesdays